With the advent of Bitcoin Cash, Segwit2x, and Bitcoin Gold, more and more people are asking about Bitcoin and these different Bitcoin copycats. And many people are still wondering, is it possible that a centralized miner, centralized miners across the world, corporations and banking institutions, can they overtake the real Bitcoin blockchain? Or even worse, can they hijack the Bitcoin brand name and ticker symbol? In today's news, the answer is leaning toward increasingly yes, but only if we choose to not pay attention and to not take action. So what are the stated goals from Roger Ver and centralized corporations? What are banks doing about calling customers and blocking Bitcoin purchases? And as Wall Street dives into Bitcoin price and pushes it from 5,000 to 25,000, how can people buy Bitcoin without needing a bank, without needing a Visa card? Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together we are minting coins. So thanks for showing up, thanks for being here. If you're a new subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Uh, also like this video, it really helps other people find us information and to find uh, our channel and to help us continuing to bring people together and bring us all together so together we are minting coins. Uh, there's a lot going on in the news today, and there was a, a bunch of information we were going to talk about, and then there was this press release that we stumbled upon, uh, uh, came a, uh, come across, we stumbled upon, and uh, the press release was just very bold, uh, very brazen, and uh, very Roger Ver. So uh, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on in the marketplace. Uh, we're looking, uh, getting ready to do some travel, looking to um, maybe get around and see if we can learn about Bitcoin and other parts of the world. Uh, we're going to be excited to bring you more information and to talk to you about that. We'll probably be uh, releasing that information first inside the Minting Coins group. So uh, if you haven't yet, go to mintingcoins.com. If you're one of the first 500 users, then make an account. And if you'd like a free membership, we can upgrade your membership for free. And then you can be a part of the community that we're building, that we're helping to bring together uh, with uh, not as many trolls and not as many uh, referral links and not as many of those other things that get completely out of hand in other places like Slack and Facebook and uh, those sort of areas. So with that being said, why don't we dive right into the market, see what's going on in the world of Bitcoin, take a peek at the news, and then let's discuss. So starting over here at coinmarketcap.com, we're in a world with over 1,182 different cryptocurrencies and a total market capitalization at $164 billion. In the past 24 hours, the trading volume has been a healthy $5 billion, and our Bitcoin dominance is still pretty strong at 54.8%. So uh, where we are with Bitcoin is that uh, the Bitcoin had been increasing, and then uh, there seems to be what I think most people would describe as bless you, a healthy pullback. And, uh, and then looking at the seven-day charts across uh, some of these other currencies on coinmarketcap.com, uh, we just see that Ethereum is continuing to... Uh, trend down this week after popping up earlier this week. Uh, Bitcoin Cash had a spike uh, in the past couple of days, and this is probably coming from uh, the press release that we're going to be talking about in the news a little bit later on, and a lot of th the speculation of a potential black swan event, uh, you know, being instigated through Roger Ver and some of these centralized players that are really interested in not just destroying Bitcoin, but completely taking it over uh, to suit their own purposes in the world, it seems. Uh, Dash is down, uh, Monero pointing down, Ethereum Classic down, Omizi Go is relatively flat the past couple of days after just being uh, destroyed uh, over the past 30 days or so as everyone is just gobbling up as much Bitcoin as they can because Bitcoin BTC is the biggest number one uh, blockchain cryptocurrency out there and everyone is really looking to get their hands on this Bitcoin as they're preparing for the 
uh, Bitcoin gold airdrop that we keep on talking about, I believe on the 25th of this month, 25th of October. And then looking forward to the Segwit 2X split uh, later on in November. So the Bitcoin gold, a lot of people are excited about because it's a friendly fork, uh, is how a lot of people would d describe it. It's a uh, uh, sort of a copy of the chain to, um, and then and then creating their own sort of cryptocurrency that was simply based off of uh, you know the, the Bitcoin blockchain as opposed to the Segwit 2X, which is described more like a contentious hard fork where uh, the 2X folks are seeking just to create division in the community, uh, seeking to uh, create fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So then people are really confused between the, you know, what is Bitcoin SegWit and what is Bitcoin SegWit 2X. And uh, as we're going to talk about in the news a little bit later, then you'll have these two SegWit coins, even though they're very, 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 very different. And then, you'll, and then you'll have Bitcoin Cash on the other hand over here that's currently number four uh, on coinmarketcap.com. And Bitcoin Cash will be able to create a clear uh, or a clearer distinguishment between them being just Bitcoin Cash without SegWit and these other Bitcoins which do have SegWit. And so it's just adding to the division, to the divide, to the fear and the uncertainty of, and doubt in the community because the number one way to, to destroy Bitcoin is to uh, divide and conquer it and then, uh, you know, uh, and then overtake, uh, you know, the little battles uh, as you can so that you can just uh, overtake those cryptocurrencies after you weaken them. That's, that's the only way of going about it because no cryptocurrency can be destroyed. Uh, that it, that's every single currency. It doesn't matter if it's Max coin or Cage coin or Putin coin or Trump coin or... Um, or the, the coolest of them all, and uh, one of my favorites, which is the Dogecoin. Uh, none of them will be destroyed, uh, but they can be, uh, you can't go through the conquer and divide aspects of it. So uh, talking about this a little bit more with these different Bitcoins that are coming about, we have this cool little meme with Mr. Burns over here. And Mr. Burns says that, sure, you can get your Bitcoin or, or, you can get whatever currency is in this mysterious box. And so if you can get Bitcoin or the mysterious currency, then uh, that's, that's a choice that is probably easy to make if you are paying attention to the Bitcoin space, because what's ever in a box is probably not something that you want, especially if it's coming from Mr. Burns, uh, the centralized authority in, in, the, in the figure. And so it's all about the original. And uh, the, the original was the first, it was the best, and then we have all of, the, all of these different copycats that are stemming from that. And so then we have uh, you know, this little graphic that, that came up on Reddit talking about the original Bitcoin established in 2009, and then we have Bitcoin Cash, and then we have Bitcoin Gold, and then we have the Segwit 2X. And so uh, they're just different iterations, different takes, different versions where people are trying to say, this is the real Mona Lisa. No, this is the real Mona Lisa. No, this is the real Mona Lisa. And then at all the time, uh, you know, seeking to uh, dilute the attention uh, and dilute the focus and dilute the writings about the, the main Mona Lisa while referring to all of these as Mona Lisa. Uh, that, that's what's going on with the Bitcoin. Um, and so we, it's just really important that we stay focused on uh, what Bitcoin is, and we just recognize that uh, Bitcoin, what, Bit, what Bitcoin is, is the original Bitcoin blockchain, uh, is the Bitcoin with SegWit, with uh, the Bitcoin with the one megabyte uh, SegWit that's being developed by the Bitcoin core decentralized group of scores and scores of developers from all across the world. Um, and... Uh, and, and not just not just what the Bitcoin is, but just recognizing that there's a Bitcoin name, there's the Bitcoin ticker symbol, and each of these other Bitcoins, the Bitcoin Cash, the Bitcoin Gold, and the Bitcoin Segwit 2X, each of them uh, are seeking to own the Bitcoin name proper, and each of them are seeking to own the Bitcoin ticker symbol, and that's just something that's re very important that people are paying attention to as time goes on across the next uh, four weeks, you know, four or five weeks to the next four or five years. So turning to today's news and talking about what's going on over here, as we see from uh, Cointelegraph earlier today, 
Uh, we have Roger Ver at Bitcoin.com and Calvin Air Media Group has have, they've issued a press release stating that Bitcoin Cash (BCH), uh, also sometimes referred to as BCC, is the only blockchain that can do it all, is what they're saying. And so, uh, with this press release, is creating an official partnership and uh, between both Roger Ver and Roger Ver's company and Calvin Air and Calvin Air's companies. And so uh, the goal from the press release stated is that clear the Bitcoin mist and to educate the people on the virtues of the Bitcoin public blockchain. And uh, what Roger Ver uh, and, and Calvin Ayer are going on to say is that Bitcoin Cash is the electronic cash system. And then they're referring to SegWits as to uh, they're referring to Bitcoin um, I believe what they're doing is they're referring to Bitcoin and Bitcoin SegWit 2X, and they're referring to both of those as a SegWit. So they're, they're just grouping all of these other Bitcoins, right? All of these other Bitcoins in air quotes that have SegWit, which will be the two of them, and, uh, and comparing those Bitcoins, right, to, to what they're calling the original Bitcoin, which is the, the Bitcoin Cash, which uh, is not the original Bitcoin since that was forked away from uh, the original Bitcoin BTC. So uh, the press release, uh, there's a quote here that goes on to state that the Calvin Air Media Group, which includes CoinGeek.com, intends to work with Roger Ver and Bitcoin.com Group to educate the world on why Bitcoin uh, public blockchain, BCC or BCH, is uh, the only one that can do it all. And so they're pushing these, uh, you know, wealthy investors, these uh, centralized companies are pushing uh, the agenda of making Bitcoin cash, you know, what they want to describe as the number one Bitcoin. So uh, just a little bit of background information that uh, there is this post back in July that was talking about Craig Wright. So if you aren't familiar with Craig Wright or the Craig Wright name, Craig Wright is this person who claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, but uh, cannot prove that he's Satoshi Nakamoto. And if he was Satoshi Nakamoto, then he would be able to prove that fact simply by making a transaction with the uh, private key of any of the Bitcoin that we know Satoshi owns, right? We know where Satoshi's Bitcoin is. We know Satoshi's Bitcoin hasn't moved. And if Craig Wright was Satoshi, then he can prove that to all the world of what he's trying to do. He's trying to prove it to all the world. He's trying to claim these patents. He's trying to claim the technology as his creation. Uh, yet... He could easily prove that by signing a Bitcoin transaction, but Craig Wright doesn't. And so when this article was posted about Craig Wright and uh, talking about Bitcoin and SegWit, uh, there, was a f th there was no disclaimer in the website that was talking about this uh, because the website that was talking about that Calvin Ayer was funding Craig Wright and, uh, you know, giving him perhaps millions and millions of dollars, according to what it looks like on Wikipedia, uh, and so there's a the vested interest there, a conflict of interest there, and uh, that's not being disclosed up front. And now we have an additional press release, additional uh, information being put out there stating that the intention of, you know, Craig Wright and Calvin Ayer and Roger Ver are to um, uh, pivot Bitcoin Cash into, you know, being called the actual Bitcoin. So uh, this article goes on to talk about how Bitcoin.com's mining pool this week uh, appeared to stop supporting the alternative Segwit 2X. And so Roger Ver was supporting Segwit 2X just as he was supporting Bitcoin Cash. And so Roger Ver has stopped supporting Segwit 2X now that Segwit 2X is all but a done deal. Um, and I know it's possible that Segwit 2X won't happen. But I think it's practically impossible that Segwit 2X won't happen. I, I, you know, I think anyone that says it won't happen is sort of foolish, uh, fooling themselves uh, because there's just too much to gain by the powers that be to create the Segwit 2X because of the financial gain like all of these middle players are going to get and because of the additional confusion that would supply into the market against Bitcoin uh, BTC. So, uh, but yet, you know, Roger Ver and, you know, these folks are still diametrically opposed to Bitcoin Core, the Bitcoin Core developers and the, the, the main Bitcoin uh, BTC. 
And so Roger Ver goes on to say that there's a group of people calling themselves Bitcoin Core who began to insist uh, that Bitcoin was incapable of storing uh, these transactions. And so, again, he's just trying to um, create this division in this community and uh, trying to write the history of Bitcoin um, as fact. And so as you're hearing about this information, you just want to, you know, be armed with your knowledge to recognize that uh, Bitcoin Core has been developing Bitcoin and, uh, and you know, Bitcoin Cash is seeking to um, dismantle Bitcoin BTC. Uh, that, that's that's how it seems here from this information and what we're getting from the, the news. And so in the show notes, we'll have a link for you, the actual press release. We have a link here at prnewswire.co.uk. And uh, some of the uh, parts here that we highlighted is that we see that, uh, you know, they're talking about how the financial establishment saw their chance to try to disrupt and disrail this new upstart uh, at their control, you know. And it sounds like they're talking about Bitcoin because that's what's going on here. But they're trying to take this piece of history and then turn it around uh, against Bitcoin and turn it against uh, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, this really seems as if there's this other establishment that is seeing their chance to disrail Bitcoin. And that's what's, that's what's actually coming out here in this press release. So again, going forward, Bitcoin.com, CoinGeek.com are going to refer to these other uh, big, they're going to refer to Bitcoin with SegWit and Bitcoin SegWit 2X, they're going to refer to those as uh, SegWit Core, or the original Bitcoin, I suppose. You know, they would refer to that as SegWit Core, um, and then would encourage other Bitcoin media to do the same. So, so uh, again, this press release, they're encouraging people to call Bitcoin, instead of calling it Bitcoin or Bitcoin SegWit or Bitcoin Core, their goal here is to get people to call Bitcoin Core SegWit Core because then they want to have Bitcoin Cash be called just Bitcoin because they've already stated in the past they just want to drop the cash and have that be called Bitcoin, especially if they have the majority of the miners mining uh, Bitcoin Cash and then increasing the centralization of Bitcoin Cash, which would be bad uh, in, in our understanding of the technology because the more centralization that exists, the weaker the technology is. And this is blockchain technology. This is decentralized technology. This is peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, you know, technology between people. And anybody can run a full node. And the more people who are running full nodes, even if those nodes aren't capable of mining, then the stronger and more secure the entire Bitcoin network is for you and for everybody in the world who's using Bitcoin. So if anyone tries to tell you that it's, not a good idea to run a, a, a your own node or it's too expensive or it's you know silly or stupid then um, then just think that's one less node one less point on the network unique point on the network that uh, uh, that is validating and confirming and decentralizing the transactions so their press release goes on to state that Bitcoin Cash is an electronic system of cash and the SegWits are not. Um, and the Calvin Air Media Group, which includes CoinGeek.com, intends to work with Roger Ver and his Bitcoin.com group to educate the world on why a Bitcoin blockchain BCC, why the Bitcoin public blockchain BCC, again, they're just calling it the Bitcoin public blockchain. How crazy is that? Is the only one that can do it all. Um, so first they're going to drop the Bitcoin cash. So first they're going to get people to call Bitcoin core. They're going to get people to call that SegWit core. And then step two is to, uh, take Bitcoin cash and drop the, the word cash. And then step three would, would be to, you know, get the ticker symbol change from BCC to BTC and just completely walk into this new body. Um, that's really interesting. What do you think? Am I reading this wrong? Are they... Are they right that Bitcoin Cash is the number one real Bitcoin? And that's, uh, I mean, this I, I, I can't even like restate this. This is just so crazy, so brazen, so bold at uh, how they're attacking this and just completely stating their plans, probably because they know that they're not getting enough traction behind the scenes uh, trying to do it themselves. Um, so here we have this tweet, this photo with the Bitcoin Cash governance model. And so with the Bitcoin Cash governance model here, we have a picture of uh, uh, Craig Wright, 
who is the fake Satoshi Nakamoto. And then we have the, um, uh, what was the guy's name here? Calvin Ayer, uh, who's a you know billionaire business and media mogul. And then we have Roger Ver, who's also a billionaire business and media mogul. So uh, yeah, these would be the three guys who essentially would control uh, Bitcoin Cash and be able to control all the rules uh, about Bitcoin Cash moving forward. You know, maybe with a little bit of help from people like Jihan Wu and uh, some some central banking organizations around the world. So uh, we have the Calvin Air Media uh, Wikipedia page for you. You can take a peek at this to see what they talk about over here. Um, real quick, let's see what we have about Bitcoin on his page. Um, so a part of the, the Bitcoin Bermuda. Um, you know, some other information here that you can uh, check out in terms of... Uh, you know, what it's talking about with his connection to Bitcoin and Bitcoin online gaming. And uh, also behind the Craig Wright pub, uh, publicly asserting himself as Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, but then uh, Calvin Ayer and his part of the operation, uh, financial backer of the $30 million acquisition and development of the Craig Wright assets. Um, so that's some interesting information right there. You can, you can jump in here and take a, a, a deeper look for yourself. Uh, maybe even correct the record uh, as a Wikipedia editor yourself. And so all this is really interesting because we have this fear, uncertainty, confusion and doubt going on around Bitcoin, just like it's been happening from China, just like it's been happening from JP Morgan and Jamie Dimon. And uh, we continue to get it from the Bitcoin cash side of things as well with Roger Ver and, and, uh, and all these other guys. So... Um, with that, we know that the Bitcoin price has been pumping. Uh, about a year ago, the Bitcoin price was, what was it, six, seven hundred dollars, and uh, maybe pushing eight hundred dollars or so. And uh, and a year later, Bitcoin is about fifty-two, fifty-three hundred dollars. And there's a, a ton of predictions talking about Bitcoin breaking past that six thousand dollar mark and even hitting as high as twenty seven thousand dollars per bitcoin within the next six to ten months as we've seen in the the recent videos in the past and so i just wanted to touch base with you guys and just uh refer to this article how wall street is driving the bitcoin price surge according to bloomberg and so this uh, quote goes on to say that they think that I think Wall Street may actually be responsible for driving the Bitcoin price because it's with every announcement that Wall Street is thinking of embracing Bitcoin as a new asset class that we are starting to see the surge. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And so with that being said, um, you know, we just know that there's a lot of bit of money. There's going to be a lot of bit, a lot of money going into Bitcoin, a lot of money going into the blockchain space, a lot of investment going into a lot of these alternative currencies. And ultimately, they're going to be doing what all of the original uh, individual investors have been doing. And that has been investing into these other currencies and looking into the pumps and dumps so they can get into as much Bitcoin that they can own as possible. And so, uh, with Wall Street getting heavily involved, with Bitcoin futures coming online, with Bitcoin ETFs coming online, that's going to be a lot of capital going into Bitcoin, a lot of additional capital going into Bitcoin, which is going to swell up uh, the Bitcoin market cap. It's going to swell up the um, price per Bitcoin. It's going to uh, increase the number of ways that the markets are going to be able to purchase Bitcoin, let it be through the futures or through the ETFs or directly, you know, let it be through Coinbase or an exchange. And in the very near future, we'll have these decentralized exchanges as well. With uh, And then there's, there's things like over-the-counter trades and uh, trades behind the scenes as well. There's a lot of things that happen that can affect uh, the Bitcoin price. And uh, that's not even including normal things that happen in the space when there's a really popular ICO or when there's a new development where, um, you know, overall, the, you know, uh, the currency is increasing because people are interested in getting in because of a particular utility. Um, and so what I'm trying to say with all of this is that as the Bitcoin price increases further and further, even if the volatility swings stay the same, at, you know, let's just make up a number and say 10 percent, you know, those 10 percent swings at a higher per Bitcoin price 
are going to be much, much bigger. And what we're predicting is that not only are we going to see a higher Bitcoin price, but we're going to see uh, even greater volatility uh, in, inside the space. And so the volatility sounds like a bad word because everywhere in the media and the financial services, people use volatility to say that's a reason why Bitcoin is bad because there's so much volatility, right? As opposed to the dollar, which has so much stability, but the dollar doesn't really have a lot of stability at all. You think the dollar has stability. You think the hundred dollar bill has stability, but if it did, why is the, the price of milk change uh, so much? Why is the price of the groceries change so much? Why are the prices of groceries increase so much and so often? Uh, maybe if you don't have a family, you don't notice these things. Maybe if you look at the gasoline prices, you notice these things. You know, somewhere in your life, maybe you're just recognizing that everything's getting more and more expensive every year. Uh, and so that's volatility with the U.S. dollar. But instead of the volatility being reflected in the price of the U.S. dollar, that volatility is being reflected in the prices of the things that the dollar is buying because they're able just to print as many dollars as they want, whereas Bitcoin, there's never going to be 21 million. So at the Bitcoin, the price volatility is really reflected in the price of Bitcoin because there's never going to be more than a total number of Bitcoins that exist. And right now, there's only about 16.6 .6 million of those Bitcoins existing. And so, uh, you know, so everyone's being led to believe that volatility is bad, but financial folks and Wall Street folks, volatility is great. Volatility means that there's room for them to play. Volatility means that there's room for them to make profits. Volatility means that there's going to be the swings there where it's sort of uh, winding up the bat when the market goes down and then swinging that bat when the market goes up uh, to, to, for them to hit a home run. And a home run for them would be to 10x their in investment on any given day or any given week. So uh, what does this mean? This means that buying and holding may continue to be the best strategy. This means um, just consistently purchasing in to the Bitcoin space if this is something that you're interested in uh, and just purchasing the same amount over time, let it be that the price is high or the price is low, may be the surest way for you to gather the most amount of Bitcoin possible, because as a lot of people have been talking about, um, uh, who was it, Tony Robbins that was that was talking about this in his new book, that time in the market is much more powerful than timing the market. And uh, even the, the best trader who was able to predict the, the 30 best days or 50 best days, I, I think it was the the best trader who was able to predict the 50 best days in the stock market over the past 30 years is only so much more ahead than the person who is dollar cost average for that same period of time. And that's that's someone that knows exactly what they're doing. And uh, let me tell you, in this crypto space, in the trading space, there might be a couple people that know what they're doing, but by and large, statistically speaking, if you don't know what you're doing, then you probably don't know what you're doing. You're essentially guessing like everybody else. And if you're lucky, you get a couple quick wins early. And so later on, when you're statistically set to have a couple losses and make a couple bad bets, it doesn't hurt as much. But overall, um, yeah, the winning, the winning strategy is the strategy that's built on the consistency. And it's the strategy that's built on the logic of the path forward, not the emotional aspect of the path forward, not getting caught up in quick gains and instant riches of caviar dreams and and all that jazz. Um, let me know what you think about the show about that in the in the comments below. Do you think that it's better to go trading, or do you think it's better to just do the dollar cost averaging? Because none of this is financial advice. So I'd love to know what you think. And so um, speaking of dollar cost averaging, uh, most people inside the United States and around the world, for them to dollar cost average, they need to do that with their money. They got to do that with their their USD, with their cash. Uh, and they're going to do that either through, I don't know, how would you do that? Either through your bank account, with your uh, through Coinbase, using your bank account, credit card, debit card account. And so here we have a couple different instances. In this first instance, TD Bank, who's preventing customers from buying Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And it seems as if they're actually trying to block Bitcoin purchases from people. 
And so what's going on is that, uh, you know, people are um, either contacting their banks or the banks are contacting the people. And we have this one instance where this one user is claiming that his TD bank card was blocked when trying to uh, buy Bitcoin. Um, so it goes on to say here that um, she said the account is linked to Coinbase and it could still be used without any issues, uh, but it's only a matter of time before uh, the bank blocks this activity from these users. And it may only be a matter of time before banks block this activity from all banks for all users, right? So in this individual called the TD Bank Card Services Hotline, the person responding to the call confirmed that TD Bank does not support Bitcoin, nor does it deal with that kind of business, that kind of business. Um, and it's not just TD Bank, but it's also PNC Bank, which uh, was recently taking some identical measures. Uh, as we saw in a previous video, I think we were talking about this when we were reading the Reddit story from from that case as well. And th those folks uh, in that case, you know, they, they were threatening to shut her account if they didn't say why she was buying the Bitcoin, uh, of which is none of their business why she's buying the Bitcoin because she's not doing anything illegal. And so overall, with the growing popularity of these peer to peer marketplaces, uh, a lot of people have the philosophy that there's no real need for bank accounts or payment cards. While there, there is a need for the masses, uh, people who understand the space and people who are looking through the space are recognizing that there's other ways uh, to purchase Bitcoin. And one of the ways that are being pointed out in this article and that uh, I've heard you know, more and more people talk about is using local Bitcoins as a valid option in this regard. Uh, and that it's time that cryptocurrency users cut their ties with banks to a bare minimum you know, because the banks aren't supporting uh, Bitcoin and they're not encouraging this, they're making it really, really difficult. And if they don't want your business, then it's best to be able to set up the life that you want in a way that's going to allow you to to have the things that you want to have, which is why you're, you learn information. It's why you're seeking information. It's why you want to connect more of these dots together and put them put them together in your mind. So you understand how, the relationship between these different variables, how these different aspects are connected to each other and then what your options are based on your situation for any of the number of things that can happen in the future <clears throat> so uh i'll leave <laughs> i'll leave this in the in the show notes below as well but there's a bunch of stories here that some people have some people who love local bitcoins who are actually talking about this on reddit and they're sharing some of their stories with you um, from all of these different crazy people who go through uh, localbitcoins.com and uh, all of the amazing people that people are, are, are meeting. And so some of these don't sound as awesome. Let it be that, you know, s someone met a banker or someone else met, you know, this rich guy in a Tesla or, you know, someone met uh, a prostitute or a paranoid guy or uh, someone met an early adopter. You know, it's just really interesting, like all these different stories where people are buying and selling Bitcoin to either be able to have Bitcoin to be able to get that Bitcoin without going through a bank, without going through an exchange. And on the other side of the equation, other people just trying to sell their Bitcoin uh, and, and trying to get cash and, uh, and then maybe trying to sell that Bitcoin at a couple percent profit. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't state that uh, buying and selling Bitcoins uh, to other people, you know, that would be something that I'm not able to do because I live in New York State and because I live in New York State, I can't buy and sell Bitcoins for another person uh, without having a bit license. So um, in New York State, there's probably people who are using localbitcoins.com, but um, there's probably some risk involved with that as well. So a lot of people have a lot of paranoia when, uh, when having these transactions person to person. Uh, some people, they, they wait for the transaction to clear, you know, in Bitcoin, it can take, give or take 10 minutes, sometimes longer. And uh, other people just, you know, they just trust it and they leave. Um, so there's, as with everything, there's going to be some positive and negative experiences. And uh, this link in the show notes talking about uh, these people's experiences might help you have a better understanding of what it's like using localbitcoins.com. 
And this is the website right here real quick. And so we're not going to go over a tutorial about how to use this. But, uh, you know, you could apparently sign up for free, log in and check out the different people in the different parts of the world. Like, for example, here's people who are buying bitcoins with cash near Chicago. Um, looks like people have ratings. And number of transactions, distance, location, the uh, price rate, the limits. If you wanted to buy between $1,000 and $100,000, you can go through, you know, this person with 100% rating. Um, it also looks like buy Bitcoins online in the United States, buy in Chicago with cash, um, sell Bitcoins in the United States, sell Bitcoins uh, near Chicago. As featured on Business Week, Forbes, Financial Times, more news. Yeah, really, really interesting. Check this out and uh, just learn about this just to see, you know, what sort of interesting tools and options are out there that uh, may be available for you in your jurisdiction. And um, yeah, and then let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I'd love to know if you have any positive experiences with local Bitcoins or if you have any negative experiences with local Bitcoins. Uh, it's definitely always interesting that people, you know, have originally had human to human trust and then we shifted to uh, having, you know, human to human trust through the internet. And then we moved over to, uh, you know, human to human trust through blockchain technology. So again, keeping it digital. And now we're going back to the human to human trust in, in real life again, but connecting the real world and the digital world together, which I have always thought is the most interesting and the most fascinating, uh, you know, elements of the technology, not just when you have a digital technology, but when you take that digital technology and you can connect it to the real world. Um, and that's what's happening more and more with blockchain technology as the, you know, Internet has done, as the Internet has laid that foundation of creating websites and maps and then taking the physical world and, you know, 3D augmented reality, um, uh, you know, connecting live cameras and that. So you're connecting the, the real world and the physical world. Now, the blockchain is doing that, but the blockchain technology is adding this layer of trust where we know the information is true uh, or at least consistent or at least, you know, uh, not hackable or, or not, you know, able to be changed by third parties, uh, that we have ledgers that are trusted between everybody that, you know, people can't tamper with. And, uh, and even though we have these systems, you know, going back to the press release from Roger Ver and Calvin Ayer, uh, it's really interesting that while they can't destroy Bitcoin outright and everyone knows that they've tried, that they're seeking to overtake it. And so it is possible that Bitcoin can be destroyed. It is possible that Bitcoin can be wounded so much so that Bitcoin is no longer the number one blockchain, the number one cryptocurrency in all the land. And so the only way to prevent that, the only way to mitigate that is to recognize what's going on, to pay attention to what's happening, to help other people understand what's happening, and, uh, and then to take actions to support the companies that are uh, true to your beliefs and your perspective of the truth, and, uh, and then to support you know, with your money, to support with your voice, to have a voice, to be heard. Um, even if that's liking a video, even if that's sharing a video, even if that's, you know, a casual mention to someone that you know, uh, it doesn't matter if we're talking about your friends or your family or your, or your enemies. We want everyone to be on the same page with Bitcoin, with blockchain technology. We want adoption and we don't want to cut anybody out, right? If there's, if this is a, a long-term philosophy. If you're listening to somebody who's creating division in the community, then that person is probably not with the uh, interests that, you know, has, has the greatest intention in their interests. Because, you know, even if someone uh, disagrees with other people, uh, someone who's building, someone who's working on getting people to come together, get people on the same page, then uh, that makes a lot more sense. Because when you have all the people in the same room, hearing the same thing, then uh, at least everyone in, is, is together and they're hearing the same information at the same time. 
But if you're dividing people and then you tell this group of people something different than you tell this group of people, all of that division is not building up the community. It's not building up the idea. It's not building up the philosophy. It's not building up our strength. It's not building up our security. It's giving it up. Uh, it's pushing it away. And so I just encourage you to keep on learning, keep on paying attention. I encourage you to have a voice. I encourage you to take action. And uh, I encourage you to vote not just with your actions and your words, but also to vote with your pocketbooks as well. You know, specifically the, the crypto firepower. Um, yeah, because that's like the most powerful firepower that now exists in the world. So with that being said, thanks for sticking around. Like this video if this video helped you. Leave your thoughts or comments in the in the comment box below. Like us on Steemit and consider joining us at mintingcoins.com where we love for you to be part of the conversation and to be heard uh, in our group and to share your ideas over there. So until next time, uh, when we're bringing more news, more information, I'm glad that together we are minting coins.